When it's the middle of winter and it's cold and wet outside, it can be pretty tough to find the motivation to get out and take photos. In fact, a lot of photographers find it so hard to get inspired that they put their camera in their bag at the start of winter and it doesn't come out until spring. But despite the cold weather and the short days, there are great shots to be had in winter as long as you're prepared to get your waterproofs on, wrap up warm and get out and find them. Well, I'm here today on the beach in Cromer in Norfolk and I reckon there's lots of potential here for some really nice coastal landscapes. Now I'm going to have a stab at some long exposures so the sea is really blurred and almost looks like mist. The problem is we're shooting in broad daylight and even with my ISO at 100, which is the minimum setting, and my aperture at f22, which is as small as it goes on this lens, the very slowest shutter speed that I can get is about an eighth of a second. Now unfortunately that's not really long enough to give me the kind of blur that I want. Don't worry though, there's a solution to every problem in photography and today that comes in the form of one of these. It is a 10 stop neutral density filter, otherwise known as a big stopper. Now in layman's terms, a big stopper is a bit like a very dark pair of sunglasses. It only lets in about one thousandth of the available light down the lens. Limiting the amount of light coming in is going to allow us to achieve a much slower shutter speed so that the sea will move a lot more during our exposure. That's the theory anyway, let's put it to the test. So uh, I've got my tripod set up now, I've got all the legs fully extended and the central column so that the camera is as high up as possible and that's just going to make shooting a bit more comfortable for me today. Now um, I've also splayed the legs out a little bit a little bit from, uh, from the usual position so that the uh, tripod's a bit more sturdy because I don't want my camera falling in the sea. Now it's essential when taking long exposures uh, that the tripod is perfectly still so um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to push the legs into the sand a little bit because I don't want the, the legs to sink into the sand during the exposure so I want to make sure it's nice and sturdy and steady just like that and that feels, that feels pretty good to me. So now we need to think about camera settings. Now uh, the first thing we need to do is to put the camera into manual mode so I'm going to go ahead and do that on the mode dial and I want the best quality shots possible so I'm going to use an ISO of 100 for minimal noise. Now I'm going to pick a, a mid-range aperture of around f16 so I can be sure that everything in the scene is in focus and finally I'm going to pick a shutter speed that's going to give me a balanced exposure which in this case is about 1 25th of a second. Now once I put the big stopper on the end of the lens I'm pretty much not going to be able to see anything through the viewfinder because it blocks out so much of the light. So I've got to get my composition right now before I put the filter on. So I'm just going to adjust the tripod slightly until I feel that my composition is correct and then I'm just going to fire off a quick shot just to take a look and see what that looks like. Brilliant, I like it. Exposure is spot on, though obviously the sea doesn't look like I want it to yet, but that's going to change when I add the filter. But when I do add the filter, it's going to completely mess up my exposure because, remember, this filter blocks out 10 stops of the available light. So what I need to do is increase my exposure by 10 stops to even things out, and I'll do that by increasing the shutter speed. Now that means my 1 25th of a second needs to become around about 30 seconds and that should give me the perfect exposure. Now the way that you can work this out easily is to use the big stopper conversion card that comes free with this issue. So I'm going to change my shutter speed to 30 seconds. Now luckily a DSLR will go to 30 seconds but if you need a shutter speed that's any slower than that you're going to have to go into bold mode and use a shutter release cable and time it manually. So with our settings calculated and this on the end we should be getting exactly the same exposure as we got before. So right before we put this on the end, I'm just going to, in manual focus, I'm just going to make sure that our focus is exactly right because once this is on, we're not going to be able to see much through the, uh, through the uh, viewfinder. So I'll just adjust this until it's perfect, okay. And then I'm going to carefully screw this onto the end. Right, let's take a shot. Fantastic, I love that. Look how milky and smooth the water looks. It's almost like cotton wool and the exposure's about right too. If it wasn't, I could always tweak it by making the shutter speed a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. 
Now, this technique isn't just perfect for coastal landscapes, it's also great for waterfalls to get that really nice silky smooth water, or you can get a really nice effect on windy days with clouds as they move across the sky. If you're interested in having a go at using ND filters, a fixed density filter like this one is gonna give you amazing quality shots. Now, you could also uh, alternatively try a welder's ND filter, which is a little bit cheaper, or you could try uh, a variable ND filter, which is gonna give you a bit more versatility, but neither of them are gonna give you the quality of one of these. So I'm challenging you to invest in an ND filter and get out there this winter and get shooting. It's not difficult, it's not expensive, and the results can look amazing. Tim, that looked incredibly cold. Wasn't that a long way to go to get just one shot? It is a long way to go, about three hours in the car, but uh, it was well worth it. There was some really nice groins there and a pier and really nice beach, so it's a really good location. However, I managed to drop my camera in the sea, so that wasn't the best. Oh no, does it still work? Uh, camera still works, but the lens doesn't, so... So one out of two. Yeah, it could have been worse. Sadly, that's all we've got time for. As always, we'll be back next month with more photographic shenanigans. But until then, you can catch up with the latest news and stories right here. Goodbye. Goodbye.